Now in the studio to speak on Nigeria's tax matters is Adeyemi Adediro. He's the Associate Director at Commercial Practices at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. All right, so we had the uh, president present the appropriation bill, which according to him is hinged on VAT rates. However, we see that Nigerians are, they feel like now the, they are being hinged, I mean the challenge for them is the uh, multiple taxation system. What's your take on this? Okay, well, if you look at the VAT rates, right, the news first broke out earlier in the year mm -hmm. that the government had the intention of increasing the rate from 5% to 7.5%. 7.5%. And the initial reaction was that this was going to increase inflation or rather right, have an, a reverse effect on the economy. But what the government has done now is to take that feedback and then introduce a threshold for transactions that will be liable to VAT. So businesses with um, revenue below 25 million will not be subjected to VAT. And also the list of exempt items was also expanded. You know, the basic food items like um, brown and um, white bread, milk were exempted. You know, these are the things, items that actually affect the low income earners. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the adverse impact of the increase has been, will be mitigated with the introduction of the threshold and also the expansion of the exempt list. So it's, it's, it's still yet to be seen what the actual impact is going to be, but I think um, the government has done the right thing by introducing certain reforms in the VAT system. Yeah. Now we, we're also expecting that we, we should see a uh you know, toll gate charges. We have, we already have the cash deposit and withdrawal by the CBN. We have the 15 hour stamp duty on POS. <laughs> Is this one too many at almost the same time? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it could call for concern, right? Because um, there has always been an advocate, advocacy against multiplicity of taxes, right? And the real challenge is not really the taxes being paid. It's always the real challenge in delivery of social goods. Mm -hmm. So countries that have, um, that, that have introduced taxes and multiple taxes that have delivered social amenities have little problems in collecting these taxes. So I think um, the, what government needs to do now if they're introducing all these charges is to actually make it have impact on the day-to-day -day lives of the citizens. Mm -hmm. So the schools should be improved, healthcare should be premium, such that the citizens, as they are paying their taxes, can see the impact on their day-to-day -day life. So I think mm -hmm. that other yeah. angle of the discussion needs to be focused on. At least so they know that, okay, I'm paying my tax, but I know that my children are going to have better standard of, you know, the education system is going to be better when they get to the hospital, they're going yeah. to get better health care. Absolutely. But what's the, what would be the adverse effect of this tax system and tax policy in which the government is trying to implement now? Yeah, you know, we just talked about the budget, right? Yes. We, we talked about the GDP, Nigerian tax to GDP ratio being 6%. And what makes up the GDP is not just government expenditure. You have private investment and you have household consumption. So if the multiplicity of taxes continue, it's going to have an impact in private investment, which affects the GDP, which affects, and GDP is the value of the economic activities mm -hmm. in the country. So if that continues, it will be more difficult for com companies to pay their tax obligations because they won't be making profits. And also individuals won't be earning enough to be able to pay personal mm -hmm. income tax. Mm -hmm. So I think an holistic view of the whole system is required, mm -hmm. such that you don't have policies encouraging a certain behavior and policies being counterproductive to that. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about uh, policies. Would you suggest that the uh, VAT law of 1993 should still be upheld or we should, there should be a complete overhaul of this? Yeah, so like we said, there, there has been changes introduced by the government, like the threshold, like the expansion of the exempt list, you know, and that's just the beginning. You know, if you compare the Nigerian VAT system to other countries, there's a lot of reform still required. So I think the government has taken the right step in the right direction by introducing, introducing these recent reforms, but there's still more room for other mm -hmm. things like the input VAT and many things in the VAT Act that still needs to be improved. There are certain areas that need clarity. For instance, VAT on royalty is not specifically stated in the VAT Act. So many things are required 
that, but it's worthy of um, note that the introduction of the finance bill, if this continues year in year out, it will be a good platform for the comp com for the um, government to review the tax laws okay. in the previous years and the impact on the economy mm -hmm. and see how Very changes important. can be made on a year to year basis rather than wait over the years and still be living with the same problems in the laws. And one of the things you said when saying the news was that government will be reviewing domestic laws to yes. see how, how it compares with global standards. So that's really, really very important and is a good step in the right direction. But do you see them following through with all of these things listed during the pre president's presentation? Yeah, um, this is the last tenure of the president and this is his last chance to make a mark, you know. And I think um, we just have to believe the government, you know, if they say they are going to do this, we, ours is to believe that they will do this. But it's also important for the government to also be checking the implementation of these things as yes, the years go on important. so that the citizens are encouraged. If you say, okay, I should pay my taxes, then you should also do your own part of the social contract. So as yes. I'm paying my taxes, you should also provide the social amenities needed to make my life easier. All right, and finally, before we go, would you suggest that with all of these policies and strategies that the government is implementing, we are getting closer to at least finally ensuring that our projected revenue by the end of 2020 is actualized? Because looking from 2016, we haven't met any of the projected uh, revenue. You know, you, you said in your news that um, the percentage of Nigerians, you know, that are paying taxes about... So we, we have about 60% of Nigerians 60 not paying taxes. Not paying, 60 percent not paying taxes. So that shows that there's room for expansion of the tax nets. If I'm paying taxes, it's only good for those that are not paying taxes to also do the same. So in terms of revenue generation, we've been focusing on oil over the years. But there's opportunity to be unlocked in the economy in terms of mm. taxes. So if we expand the tax net and introduce policies for financial inclusion, yes. like the informal sector is contributes largely to the GDP, but they are not paying as much taxes as they should. So if we introduce policies that encourage financial inclusion, we'll be able to monitor those financial transactions, and then they will be able to fulfill their tax obligations. And if we introduce simplicity in the tax system, mm -hmm. it will be easy and efficient for people to comply. So with that, there are opportunities for the government to actually meet the revenue. All right, thank you so much for joining me in the studio. That's all we can have because of time. Thank you yeah, so much. You're David. welcome.